Hey everybody, Dave Monahan, Guts and Tools and Supplies, and time once again for another Tech Lab Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about cylinder head disassembly. Yes, we're going to take some heads apart again. You've all heard me say in the past, I can take just about any cylinder head apart with a socket and a hammer. But I've yet to be able to put a cylinder head back together with a socket and a hammer. And as you know, Goods and Tools and Supplies, we offer a variety of different C-frame uh, valve spring compressors to get your standard Chevys and Fords disassembled. But when it comes to the multi-valve overhead cam cylinder heads, uh, it takes a little bit more than just a C-frame, especially if you're doing a consistent amount of these types of cylinder heads. Now, you've seen in, in previous episodes the manual bench, our CF500. Nice unit, you know, way to get in there, very affordable, gets the job done. But when it steps up to doing more than just three, two or three of those cylinder heads a day, you need to look at our PSB5000. This is a pneumatic spring bench, and what it does is just speeds that whole uh, assembly uh, up. Uh, dramatically enough to justify a few more dollars in, in its acquisition cost, but it pays off in the long run. We've got a lot of these in, in your in your big dog engine builders out there, your Jaspers, your AERs, your LKQs, and so on and so on, uh, because they do a whole a lot of these multi-valve overhead cam cylinder heads. Before we get too much into the uh, features of this particular machine. When it arrives at your door, it's going to be in a box like this, a big old wooden box. It's going to have these little tabs on it that you're going to have to straighten up with a pair of pliers. And I completely suggest that you take all that off and remove this lid. Because once you get down inside of here, I'd like you to again take this bottom piece off. This is going to be attached to a skid. There's going to be four of these 13 millimeter cap screws holding this unit to that skid underneath this box. So you've got to get those four out before you can get it out of the, off the skid and back up here and on your workbench. Already have a pre-designated place on where you want this unit to be in your shop. You're probably going to need uh, approximately, uh, what is this thing, 28, uh, 28 long, 24 wide, and I think it's like 26 high. So uh, this much space on your workbench, plus your tooling and uh, other accessories that you might need. Pre-think that out before you get that out of the box. I did want you to be aware of uh, how to get it out of the box to save you some time. So we're going to get this out of the way. Okay, well now that we've got it out of the box, I've got it in position on the workbench at the right height for my operator and all that. Uh, there's a couple of things you need to know uh, uh, during the next uh, phase of setup. And uh, one of them is, is this little guy uh, right here. Uh, there's two socket head set screws in here, and they're 8 millimeter, and they are metric, so keep that in mind. This whole machine uh, is metric. Uh, this one is just like this one on, on the side here. They're both use that eight millimeter tool. You're gonna have to actually crack this one, open this up, remove that screw, allow this bar to fall, and then this will give you access to this set screw here. And I'll show you that it was actually staged inside of, hang on here, staged right here, and this has to clock 90 degrees. So it'll come to you like this, and you'll need to clock it 90 degrees this way, and then there's a screw on the bottom, and there's a screw on the top, and we'll go ahead and tighten that up just loosely, and then come back over here and snug up that 8 millimeter socket head cap screw. Once again, double check the other side just to keep everything good to go. Now, what I was talking earlier, do not remove this set screw, do not remove this portion. This is above that taper, uh, and because this goes around to the back, and I'm going to show that to you here in just a quick moment. Okay, now we're at the point of, like I said, we're going to remove this uh, socket head cap screw from this end, and it's going to be placed right down here or right up here. One of these places will be empty. It will be a, a, a silver washer that you'll want to put in there. And at this time, go ahead and leave these leave these just snug, a little bit on the loose side. And I'll show you why when we go to the back of the machine. So leave these just a little bit snug. And let's go to the back of the machine. Now, 
and now we're here at the back and this is where we get that plus or minus 25 degrees of tilt. Again, we've got eight millimeter socket head cap screws back here. We want to take the tension off of that one as I relief the tension on those ones. Now here's a stud sticking out here and that's where this threaded female portion goes right in. And again, I'm not going to put that all the way in because I want that full uh, tilt available to me. If I push that in too far, this taper is going to prevent that tilt from happening left to right. And it's important that we have that capability plus or minus 25 degrees. But in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and leave it snug again. Tighten up my lower after I've made my adjustment. Then I would go back to the front of the machine before I load my cylinder head and go ahead and snug up those two socket head cap screws at that particular time. Now while we're back here, we've got some, uh, we've got some airline to deal with. And you might see that this airline is color coordinated because these fittings here are also color coordinated. You've got a blue one and you've got a black one and they're kind of glued together here in the middle so put the blue one. Now these are just uh, push and play uh, type of fittings. You don't have to uh, put any pipe dope on there, nothing to thread in, nothing to thread out at this point. We'll put the blue one in where the blue one goes. We'll put the black one in where the black one goes. And again, those are snug in there. The only way to remove them is to push in on that and then re retrieve that. But it pushes in and then it pulls out. So it's kind of like a Chinese handcuff. Put your finger in there, you can't get them out. Same situation we've got going there. And this is your foot control. Right here is the foot control. Up, down, up, down. Same thing. Color coordinated. Blue to blue, black to black. Your shop air will then require uh, whatever uh, air nipple that you have in, in your shop. You'll need to put some pipe dope or some Teflon tape on there and thread that and plumb your shop air to this machine right there. Yeah, so go ahead and place your foot control convenient, whether you're left footed or right footed. I'll leave that up to you where you want it to be. Uh, another thing I want you guys to be aware of is when you get this machine, it's going to have some of these uh, foam protectors on them. And we can use a screwdriver to pop these little O-ring securing uh, points to hold these plates. I'll tell you what those plates are all about here in just a moment. But we'll want to put this one on the bottom or these on the bottom because you got a long one and a short one here. And you might say, well, geez, Dave, why why has this got a long plate here and a short one and a long one there? Well, you gotta look over here at this cylinder head. Let me tell you guys, the cylinder head here has got a nice little straight places here to clamp on. But here we got a wooger on the inside, we got Another woolly on the outside, another wooger down inside of here. So it, it makes it kind of hard because we need to hold this thing in place, not so much as to uh, keep it from flying out of the machine, but we want to secure it, especially if we, when we tilt this table, plus or minus this 15 degrees, or excuse me, 30 degrees uh, over here. So again, back to this here. There's a little O-ring here. You get that plate and you pop him right in. Same thing on the left side, set your uh, small one left or right, that's up to you, and your long one left or right, that's again completely up to you. And you can see how they move around, allow you plenty of adjustment in that regard. Again, gravity's going to mostly hold this uh, cylinder head on here, but these uh, clamps will facilitate that. The outside uh, uh, control the top, and you can see I can move those independently or simultaneously back and forth. The inside knobs can control this bottom piece. And again, I can set that at an angle here, I can bring it down here, or I can run it parallel, depending on my advantage. The reason these are here is so the cylinder head doesn't slide off in front, into our lap, because there'll be times, because these valves are, are, are uh, kind of hemispherical here, facing each other, and we'll need to make this adjustment. This knob here, before I get into that, this knob here takes zero out of the equation. I'll explain that to you. If I've got that Kipalisa handle loose and this Kipalisa handle, you can see I've got plus or minus 30 degrees of movement on this table. When I want to come back to a true zero, 
that's what that's for right there. And then I can lock that back down all the way through. And I've got a Kepalisa on the left, and I have a Kepalisa here on the right. Another thing you need to be aware of is you're going to need different diameter of pressure feet, uh, or adapters as we call them. And 28 millimeters is the one that's going to come standard uh, with the machine. Now, we do have 18, 23, and 35 of them. Nice, big, honking. And the smaller ones have this protection, this nylon protector in there, because we're going to be down in the bottom of this lifter bucket. We don't want to put a burger inside any of those lifter bucket bores at all to hinder the up and down movement of that uh, lifter bucket inside of that bore. So you need to select the correct foot uh, for your application, and that's going to be based on the diameter of your retainer, which is directly related to the diameter of your lifter bucket. In this particular case, I'm going to have to go with the 23 millimeter uh, uh, presser foot or adapter, as we call it. And it's a quick change right here, quick release, comes right out. It's got a flat here, and this one also has a flat. And we put that right back up inside of here like that. So we've got our setup pretty much uh, uh, going here. Getting the clamps out of the way. And let's see. Oh, one other thing I wanted to tell you about. That's a sliding table here. You see, we've got full protection as this table moves left to right. But one thing you want to make sure of is these expanding pieces here that these uh, L brackets on the outside need to go to the outside of the table itself. And once that does that, then you can see it travels quite readily with the entire pressing carriage here on top. So let's connect our air to our foot control. We're going to mount our cylinder head in here, and it's very, very simple actually. The deck surface is what we're going to mount it to. I'm going to work on this. Uh, this is a five-valve uh, Audi cylinder head, so it's one of the more difficult uh, uh, units to work with as far as disassembly and reassembly goes. And uh, we'll set that up here, bring him forward, and then see how our, our clamps come in and do their job according to the surface on the inside.